In my last video, I got so many questions about my hair color, so today I want to quickly answer those. Now, most of you guys know, I use henna fairly regularly in my routine. I aim to use it at least once a month, but it has been as frequent as every other week. And henna is what gives my hair its red to orangish to even purplish hues, depending on the light. And this is why I love henna so much because it's always a little bit different. And depending on how you use it and depending on where you source it from, you can get wildly different results. So today I will be sharing what I do in my routine personally and how you can get similar results. Now, first thing to understand is that not all henna is created equally. There is body art quality henna and henna that is typically used for hair. Now, henna that is used for the hair typically has a lower dye content, which can be beneficial if you are using it for treatments and you don't want to do anything too strong, but it's gonna take a lot more applications to get that really rich color. Also, depending on where your henna is sourced, you can end up with very different colors, anywhere from a coppery orange all the way to a really rich burgundy. Now for myself, I try to achieve a rich red to a burgundy tone, but I do really like having a little bit more dimension and having it look a little bit fiery in some lights. And there are a few things, a few tips and tricks that I like to do to try to achieve this. The first being getting a good quality henna. Now I'm going to assume that most of you guys watching know about henna souk and probably buy a lot of your powders from them. They have a variety of different hennas sourced from different places. And in the description of each type of henna, they will mention where it is sourced and what type of color you can expect to get from it. Now, because I am going for a rich red to burgundy color with a hint of fire, I go for a more orange to red dye. And because my natural hair color is dark brown, over time with repeated applications, I will achieve those more burgundy tones. So I personally really like to purchase Henna Souk's Jamila Henna Powder, and that is my go-to when I'm looking for a solid, high-quality, body art quality henna powder. However, when I want to tone down the fieriness and go for a deeper red, I will go for Henna Souk's Rajasthani Henna Powder. However, with my last few treatments, I've been using a completely different henna powder, when I want to save some money or when I am specifically looking to elongate my curls, I will use New Pure Henna from Amazon with the nine herbs mixed in with it. I find that it tends to be a little bit more orange, but with repeated applications, it starts to become um, deeper and a little bit more red. It's not my favorite henna to use, mainly because I feel like it doesn't leave my hair feeling quite as strong or as thick as other brands do. And it does tend to loosen your curls quite a bit, which depending on your goals can be a pro or a con. For most people though, if you are inspired by my hair color, I highly recommend the Jamila Henna Powder from Henna Souk. Or if you want it a bit darker and you don't want the fieriness, um, the Rajasthani Henna is really good as well. My second tip is to do a lot of treatments. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I aim to do a treatment at least once a month. And by treatment, I mean a full henna mask, not a gloss, a full henna mask. The more you do these treatments, the richer the colors become. And because the color does tend to oxidize after the first week you apply a mask, reapplying on a regular basis is a great way to keep the color fresh and exciting. Now, if you are worried about drying out your hair from so many treatments, then I highly recommend getting some olive oil or some avocado oil, mixing it in with your deep conditioner, use it immediately after a henna treatment, and then again, three or four days afterwards. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, just leave the conditioner in for the duration of your shower, rinse your hair, style as normal, and you really shouldn't have any issues. My third tip is to add other ingredients to your masks that can enhance the color. This can be really fun to experiment with. When I first started using henna back in 2017, 
I was using a brand that was a bit more on the coppery side. So to enhance the color and to try to achieve a more red tone, I would actually mix my powders with beet juice instead of water, and that would create a really beautiful red color. You can also experiment with hibiscus to see if that has an effect. Or if you have seen my shorts recently, I was able to dye a human hair extension with turmeric. So that could be something to try if you are looking for a more fiery effect. Now, my fourth tip is not really a tip, but it is something that I experimented with last summer. What I did was that every week I would alternate between doing a henna mask and one of those deep conditioner hair dyes like Overtone. And <laughs> in my mind, I imagined that if I could sort of sandwich the temporary hair color from the conditioner with the more permanent loss and dye from the henna, that over time, I would end up with a permanent, super beautiful red burgundy hair color. Full disclosure, it did not exactly work out that way. The temporary hair dyes do fade over time over the course of a few weeks but it was still really fun to do and it's a really quick way to bring out the vibrance of your hair color after the loss and dye has oxidized when you're in between treatments and it does not negatively interact with the henna in any way so that's something that you don't need to worry about so that is what i do to get my hair color but there are a couple things I just want you guys to keep in mind. Like I said before, my natural hair color is dark brown and that actually makes working with henna really interesting because sometimes you really just don't notice that my hair is colored at all. Like right now, it looks pretty normal to the unassuming eye, but depending on the light and the angle of the sun, my hair can look super fiery orange, especially when I have just done a fresh treatment. But other times after my color has oxidized a little bit or I'm in more artificial lighting, my hair color can look purple. And right now you can see that the sun has shifted just a little bit and my hair honestly doesn't look like I've dyed it at all. I hope that this was helpful and answered your guys' questions. If you want to know how I finally got my hair to waist length after years of trying, make sure to check out this video right here.